Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So these days I'm in Goa and I keep on meeting a lot of people who watch my YouTube channel quite regularly. And one of the key questions that they ask me is that Akshat, you are here in Goa, you're retired, you have achieved early financial independence. So how did you do it? And is there some secret sauce that you can tell us that would allow us to retire in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s? Okay, so here is the no filter clear cut answer that it is really, 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 really tough to retire in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s in a country like India. Why am I saying it? The number one reason is that in order to achieve early retirement in a country like India, you need to have something called as contrarian thinking. Most of us are scared of it. Most of us diss at people who talk about contrarian thinking and therefore early retirement is really tough. So let me demonstrate that by asking you a very simple question. So here is the question and the question is that how much money do you think as of today? So in December of 2022, if somehow you got this X amount of money, just fill the blank, what that X number should be. It could be 5 crore, 10 crore, 15 crore, 100 crore. You tell me in the comment box how much money you need today in order for you not to work a day in your life from this point that could be termed as financial independence early retirement so do pause the video do give me that commentary and many of you i'm sure would have given me answers like 5 crore 10 crore 15 crore 100 crore and all those answers are wrong why am i saying it so for this you need to understand the story of lebanon so basically in 2019 in lebanon there was something called as capital control capital control in very easy to understand term means that let's say that you earned 100 crore equivalent money in Lebanese pound and you kept it in your Lebanese account, government, what they did was that they introduced something called as capital control. So capital control meant that, hey, you can't buy anything with that money that is lying in your bank account. You can't withdraw it. You can't transfer it to some other country. So that money got logged into your bank account. And every day, Lebanese currency was losing its value. Why? Because the Lebanese government was going through a crisis and people's money was logged into their bank account. They could not withdraw it. They could not spend it. They could not do anything with it. And inflation was eating the money that they have already worked very hard to save. So even if you had 100 crores worth of money and within a few days, it got split into half. Something very similar happened in Sri Lanka. Something very similar happened in Pakistan. Something very similar keeps on happening every now and then. But if you go speak with a financial planner or a retirement planner, number one piece of advice that they will do is, sir, go and do equity. Madam, go and do fixed deposit. Buy dividend stock. Do this, do that. But the point is that the primary goal of money and the primary goal of retirement planning is to protect you from any type of circumstances that might happen to you. This by default has the component of doomsday planning. Now you'll say that Akshat, you are giving like such negative news. You are such a negative person, this, that. No, I'm a very positive person, but that does not mean that I will throw away all the caution to the air and I would not plan things as per the fact. Here is the chart. I keep on referencing this chart on several of my videos. One day this dead bubble is going to pop. And if you are in your 20s and 30s, planning your retirement, working 14, 14, 15, 15 hours in office, cutting all your expenses to do your SIP, this, that. The point is that if you're not preparing for a doomsday, you are doing yourself a disservice. So on this video, I am going to talk about seven, eight key points that I'm executing in order to build on my retirement plan and preserve my retirement plan. These are genuine steps that I'm taking. If it makes sense to you, please go and follow it. If it does not make sense to you, it is completely cool. You build your own retirement plan, but it is very important that you hear the other side of the story too, because these are some of the contrarian points that very few people are talking about. So let us kickstart our conversation. And the first key thing that I'm doing is that I am owning both paper assets and non-paper assets in my retirement portfolio. Now, what is the meaning of retirement portfolio? Well, there is no magical thing as retirement portfolio. It is just the portfolio that I'm building. Right now, I have a portfolio which is a stock portfolio. I have a crypto portfolio. I have a real estate portfolio. I have some fixed instruments called as FDs. Now, many of these things are paper-oriented or paper-based asset things, and many are not paper-oriented things. So if you have been following my channel, I do invest in real estate. That is one of the asset classes in which I invest. You might also know that I am a highly diversified investor. Why am I a highly diversified investor? Again, please go and check this dead chart that if the world debt bubble is going to pop and it will pop at some point, then all the government debt, all the private sector debt, it is going to collapse. So that becomes like a bad scenario. So therefore, you should have a part of your portfolio that is dedicated to non-paper based assets. So essentially, when you talk about government bonds or when you talk about stock market, when you talk about cash, 
cash which is lying in your bank account or even in like digital rupee format or whichever format all those are paper assets these are backed by a paper called as currency and are in turn guaranteed by the sovereign which is the government of a particular country now the governments unfortunately have created this debt bubble now do i know when this debt bubble is going to pop i have no clue but is this situation problematic now yes it definitely is problematic i don't know when this is going to pop but to me as a sensible person who is planning his retirement who wants to be prepared for any type of situation i need to put my money where the government does not have direct control and one of the key areas become real estate there are other options for example gold is there bitcoin is there if you have more faith in any of these three mediums you can go and put your money government right now does not have complete control over any of these asset classes so let's say right now that you have 5 crore worth of fds and the government decides to increase the money supply by 10x whatever there is right now in the economy then the worth of those fds will come down quite dramatically by how much by 10x by what rate the supply has increased but on the flip side if you have a real estate would the worth of that real estate go down by 10x because the government has decided to print 10x more money no the answer is no therefore having some non paper based assets makes a lot of sense at least to me therefore when the markets look overvalued to me i sell a part of my stock portfolio and move that money into real estate or other forms of non paper based assets now another related point that people usually tell me is that you know what india's equity market is going to boom so much good good stuff is going to happen yes i agree and therefore 80% of my money is into indian equity market i am not being pessimistic about it but the equity market or stock market is entirely moved by the government If you want a case in point here is Japan you can go and check how much the Japanese stock market has given returns the answer is zero ask people that why has that happened they will not be able to explain it there is an entire case study that i had done you can go and watch it i will also link it in the description box but the short answer there is that the japanese government has followed a mandate to keep the interest rate close to 0% why is that the point because they don't want everyday inflation to rise why because the population there is slightly on the older side so the japanese government artificially controls that stock market similarly in india right now we don't have a demography problem but does it mean that in 30 40 years, it would not be the case even our population might start stagnating so therefore it makes sense not to put all your eggs in one basket so this is the first key point that in order to build your retirement portfolio you must have exposure to some non paper based assets now comes the second related point that akshat if you are such a pessimist then why don't you remove all your stock market money and put it in real estate market why because i don't know whether this debt is going to continue to increase from this point or no i know that this is a bad situation but i can't guarantee you that this situation will not become worse this debt that you are seeing today it can become almost 5x and the more debt that is taken on the world the more the stock markets will grow how exactly that will pan out if you want me to make a video i am happy doing it but for the time being i don't know to what extent this level of debt can be increased now let's work with the assumption that the world debt will continue to rise now what will happen the stock markets will rise with it therefore i am a stock market investor as well now if that is the assumption then what type of stocks you should buy well well you should buy growth stocks not dividend stocks now this is again a contrarian point many people will say that you know what many of our financial advisors they have told us that okay if you want to plan your retirement go start buying dividend stocks because dividend gives you regular returns okay so for you to understand this concept you need to understand the concept of dividend again there is a separate video that i have done i will again link it in the description box you can go and get a complete explanation but here is a very quick summary now let's say that you invest in itc now let's say that you purchase one stock and you purchased it at 200 rupees now how will you as a stock investor make return from itc you have two ways now one option is that the itc stock itself gives return so for example the stock price goes to 250 then how much profit you are making you are making 50 rupees other option is that you continue to hold itc it stays at 200 rupees but it ends up giving you an yearly dividend of 15 rupees then how much return are you making you are making 15 rupees of return so these are two options in which the stock gives return now what people believe is that in order to make money in the stock market you just need to buy dividend oriented stocks if you buy stocks that are paying you let's say hypothetically an aggregate dividend of 5 lakh rupees you have built a massive portfolio but what people forget is that the stock price also comes down here is an example of oil india limited and if you check this year's dividend what they have paid out they have roughly paid out 15 rupees of dividend now imagine that you would have purchased this stock at 300 rupees you got 15 rupees of dividend so that is plus 15 
But what is the stock price trading now? The stock is trading at roughly 200 rupees. So you lost 100 rupees of principal amount, but you got like 15 rupees of dividend. Okay, great. Now you are sitting at a loss of 85 rupees on that particular stock. So a better approach of planning your retirement is to buy stocks that give capital appreciation. Don't run after dividend oriented stocks. In fact, it has been seen that majority of the dividend paying stocks, they do not end up increasing your capital. So in fact, it is a bad thing. This is part one. Now the second related part is the tax treatment of dividend. Now many people do not understand how tax is treated when you get the dividend. So let's say that you are getting 15 rupees of dividend from Indian Oil Corporation. Now how much tax do you need to pay on this dividend? Well, the answer could go up to even 30% because dividend is added to your income and then you need to pay tax on it. But on the flip side, if you would have purchased a capital appreciation stock, so let's say that you purchase something like Nestle and you made 500 rupees of profit on it and the company gave you 0% dividend. Now, even if you decide to sell it within one year, then the maximum tax that will be levied on you would be the short term capital gains tax, which is 15% in case of equities. So is purchasing dividend oriented tax much beneficial for retirement planning or purchasing stocks that give you capital appreciation more beneficial? In my opinion, purchase stocks that give capital appreciation. And this is precisely what I am also doing. Now, this brings us to point number three of retirement planning that people do not know how to run 4% systematic withdrawal plan rule. Now, what is 4% systematic withdrawal plan? Let me explain that by using an example. So let's say that you work really hard from the age 20 years all the way to 60 years and you are able to build a corpus of let's say hypothetically 1 crore rupee. Now 4% systematic withdrawal plan says that you get to withdraw 4% of money from your corpus which is 1 crore rupee. So how much money are you able to withdraw? You are able to withdraw 4% of 1 crore which is equal to 4 lakh rupee. So you withdraw this 4 lakh rupee for your kharcha and you let the remainder 96 lakh rupee invested in the stock market. So this is what you're doing with your systematic withdrawal plan. Now the the problem is that people do not know how to plan the systematic withdrawal plan. They will buy a ton of stocks. They would not know when to sell what stocks. They would not know how to keep a track of 4% that am I selling 4% or not? How will I decide which stocks to sell when I'm 60? So it becomes like a complicated scenario. So therefore, if you don't want to learn how to invest in the stock markets and when to withdraw your capital and how, it makes zero sense for you to explore this option. But yes, if you know how to run your 4% systematic withdrawal plan in the stock market, it's a great option for you to plan your retirement. But if you don't know that, and if you have no intent of learning how to run that systematic withdrawal plan, then probably just doing nifty investing or mutual fund investing might make better sense for you. So which brings us to the next point, which is regarding nifty or index investing. Now these days, nifty or index investing is getting very popular. In fact, in the US, majority of investors have turned from actively managed mutual funds into passively managed mutual funds, which are called as index funds. Now in India also, similar culture is amping up that everyone wants to do away with the commissions on actively managed mutual funds and want to move to index fund. And this is a great move. I completely support it. In fact, I make 99% of my investments in mutual fund via index funds only, exclusively index funds. That's it. These are Indian indices and US indices. But the problem with index fund investing is that people keep on running like SIP at no matter what the price of the index is. Now, this leads to something called as index bubble creation. I had made a separate video on that. Again, you can go and watch it. All these are complicated things. I can't put it in one video and explain it to you. Therefore, retirement planning is really tough. Please know all these advanced concepts. It can save you lakhs and lakhs over the next 20, 30 years of your career. So here is the central point that I would like to state that you should not be buying index at whatever levels. Right now, the Indian index is trading at an all time high. Would it make sense to do bulk investing here? The short answer is no. Again, please go and check my videos. I was doing bulk investing when the index was at 15,000. I built massive positions in index. Am I buying even one rupee of index right now? The answer is no. I'm not buying one rupee of Indian index. But am I buying the US index heavily? The answer is yes. I'm purchasing US index heavily. Why is that the case? Because the US index is deeply discounted right now. Check NASDAQ. It is still trading roughly 32% from its peak. And if you're just going to invest in index fund, then you must build your reserve capital. 
and deploy it when the opportunity is great and deploy money in bulk. Now I know I will get a lot of heat in the comment section that you know what you are speaking against SIP this that math tells us this math tells us that see this is my personal belief this has worked wonderfully well for me and I'm happy to back it up with data show you my portfolio not an issue and I've revealed my portfolio multiple times the mutual fund portfolio that I created this year it is already at 12% gain and I know that whatever money I'm investing in US index funds that too will be in massive gains within a few months so that is my hypothesis that is the system with which I operate is that the same system that you need to follow I can't say it but according to me if the retail investors get into a system right now that system is that invest in SIP mode in index fund no matter what the price I don't think that that system is going to work in the future now it is your perspective how you want to approach this information so which brings us to the next point that when people enter the stock market what is the perspective with which they operate their viewpoint is to become a maximalist maximalist means that if I am putting 100 rupees then I want to sell my stock at the top whether I'm buying nifty I want to sell it at the top purchase it at the absolute bottom similarly if I'm buying good stocks like TCS Hindustan Unilever whatever I'm going to buy it right at the bottom and sell it right at the top you can't do it no one can even Mr. Warren Buffett can't predict the bottom and top of a stock none of the investors can but people do not understand this fact what people simply keep on doing is that they keep on trading in the stock market they will trade day in day out intraday FNO this trade that trade buying nifty selling nifty selling HUL today buying it back tomorrow so there is a lot of action that they take they are trying to micromanage the market now you and I cannot time the market yes broadly we can that generally we can get a sense what is undervalued overvalued but from everyday price chart movement we can't predict whether HUL is undervalued today or it is not undervalued today this that yes if a good stock is trading at a bulk discount it might be very obvious for example I was one of the first people to say that you know what Hindustan Unilever massive discount I filled it up similarly TCS at 3000 level massive discount filled it up similarly HDFC Bank 1450 level filled it up so those are massive buying opportunities if you miss that right now if you are trying to figure it out that okay today I'm going to sell HDFC Bank tomorrow I'm going to come back buy it back because probably it is overvalued and undervalued. no you can't do it in fact this data should convince you so this data is from the US market it is also equally applicable to the Indian market and the data pretty much covers the last 20 year returns in the stock market and they are talking about S&P 500 index and what it says is that if you are fully invested in S&P 500 for this entire 20 year period you would have gotten an annualized 5.62% gains you will say that okay this 5.62% is really low because it is inflation adjusted in the US the inflation is somewhere around 2 to 3% so the annualized return would come out to be around 8% if you are fully invested but if you tried to time the market you withdrew your money from the market and you missed 10 best trading days your return will fall from 5.62 all the way to 2% if you missed that top 20 best days in the market in 20 years just 20 days in 20 years your gains become just 2% so the story that I'm trying to tell you through this data is fairly simple that please don't try to time the market at a minuscule level yes when you see broad buying opportunities buy it in bulk no problem when you are completely convinced that the markets are hyper inflated sell it not a problem but generally don't sit and try to time the market every single day in fact if you are a sensible investor who is building his or her retirement portfolio then you need not even track your portfolio on everyday basis stop being a maximalist you can't time the bottom or top of a particular stock so this brings me to the final two points of retirement planning the next point is that please don't buy paper assets which do not beat inflation type of assets are these these are mostly government oriented schemes okay again I'm going to take a lot of it but again please remember where I started the story from that in order to retire in your 30s 40s 50s you need to be a little bit contrarian if you think and work like every single other person then you are going to have exact same outcome as they are having here is the point that I'm trying to drive home that please do not invest much money in paper bag government scheme so any government scheme is paper bag for example sovereign gold bond schemes REITs all are paper money schemes nothing more you are much better putting that money in the stock market rather than investing this money in sovereign gold bond this that okay why am I saying it again take a look at this dead bubble if the dead bubble burst tell me are you going to get your sovereign gold bond paper gold back no the answer is no why because the government will default why are you investing in real estate or actual gold well to prepare for a doomsday scenario that in case the dead bubble burst 
these assets real estate gold they are actually going to save you but if you have your money stuck in reits or sovereign gold bond all paper representation of real estate and gold are you going to get that money back when the dead bubble burst the answer is no you are not going to get any money a related point here is that take a look at any government scheme consider for example sukanya samriddhi yojana scheme this 7.5% is based on a 21 year lock in period which is absolutely mind numbing that you will lock in your money for 21 years and you will end up getting a cagr of 7.5% if you have such a long time horizon then you are much better off putting that money in nifty 50 or any kind of index you are likely to make much much higher returns than that now government scheme returns are designed to give you at most inflation adjusted returns that's it they will never give you more than inflation adjusted returns which brings me to the final point that in your retirement planning you must understand when and how to use fixed deposits now fixed deposits are not a bad investment instruments as long as you understand what you are doing with fixed deposits Now the primary value of fixed deposit is the certainty of cash flow. For example, when you go and do your fixed deposit, let's say ten lakh rupee, you have done your FD. Why have you done it? Because you need certainty of cash flow that you are going to make X amount of money from that fixed deposit, and you know exactly when you are going to get that money. Now this becomes very valuable if you are doing any goal-based investing. So let's say that you are trying to put a little bit of money aside because you have identified a real estate that you want to buy in ten years' time. now you start putting your money in a fixed deposit and the money is getting aggregated you are certain about that okay i will have this pool of money with me 10 years from now then i can go and buy this real estate that is a goal based investing and that is the right perspective of using a fixed deposit now the second key point related to fd is that fds should generally be avoided if the interest rates in the economy are very very low for example if you go back in 2020 the interest rates were extremely low so fd rates were also very bad 4 and a half 5% max you were making right now fd returns are very high for example 7 7.25% people are getting in fds moreover the markets are trading at their all time high in india so would it make more sense to lock in your fd money for 2 years from now and do some gold based investing i will leave that call up to you so here are three or four critical points that i will tell you in summary so number one you must understand the concept of paper money and non paper money and you should have positions across both the goal is to build both these type of portfolio the goal is not and or or because the objective of paper portfolio and non paper portfolio is very very different second key point you must be a diversified investor we live in such tumultuous times so much weird things are happening in the economy that you don't know what type of problem might come up tomorrow and it can derail your entire years and years of investing and saving so it makes sense to be diversified across different asset classes people have become rich by using real estate people have become rich in the bond market people have become rich in the stock market so getting married to one asset class does not do you any good just be diversified and move around different asset classes and also learn about investing across different asset classes now third and final point is the timing that you do not need to micro time things but you need to macro time things micro time means that okay every day you are tracking whether the stock is going up or down no there is no point in doing it but yes if you take a big picture view then was hul trading at a discount 6 months ago the answer was yes it was right now is it trading at a discount now i can't say whether it is trading at a discount or no so whenever you find these type of discounted opportunities for example right now i am seeing this type of discounted opportunity in us nasdaq so i am buying it heavily similarly you must identify whatever assets you are comfortable with and accordingly you must build bulk positions whenever the opportunity presents itself that is how real retirement planning is done it is all about being diversified and being flexible and thorough with whatever investments you are making i hope you enjoyed the video do press the like button and i'll see you soon